uh, there's one thing that I caught. And that's... <laughs> that's this. <laughs> and I, I need to eat. So, chat. Will you humble yourselves and be taught a lesson by wargaming? Will you allow yourselves to be humbled by our great oh fucking hell what am I doing by our great overlords while I while I eat my food let's see what they have to say huh and then we try then we try San Diego no no we don't have to watch the whole thing captains for starting a new series of why the fuck is it so blurry play. oh my god Our first episode is dedicated to battleships holy shit what is this there we go Why does our game feature ships with such powerful guns, sturdy armor, and large HP pools? The answer lies in the question. To deal high damage, withstanding coming damage, and break through the opposing team's defenses. This is the essence and purpose of the overwhelming majority of battleships. With that in mind, let's figure out how to achieve... Hold on. This is the essence and purpose guns, sturdy armor, and large HP pools? The answer lies in the question. To deal high damage, withstanding coming damage, and break through the opposing team's defenses. Break through opposing team's defenses. Right, that's why the, all the battleships have 25 kilometers right now and all stay in the back. This is the essence and purpose of the overwhelming majority of battleships. But they're not With wrong. In mind, credits where credits do. They're not wrong. They said it right. You know, do you deal a, a large portion of damage, receive a large portion of damage, and uh, and break through the enemy uh, enemy lines. Unfortunately, everybody uses them to just snipe. Let's figure out how to achieve people. So so far, we're gaming one community zero. Performance with this ship type. The majority of battleships are capable of firing over long distances. Uh -huh. but that capability has several downsides that we need to take into account. Firstly, it takes ages for shells to reach their targets, <laughs> so opponents always have time to perform maneuvers and avoid being hit. Secondly, when the firing range increases, the dispersion of shells increases as well. Thirdly, the longer the firing range, the worse the penetration of armor-piercing shells. As a result, firing on targets at maximum range is rarely as effective as one would prefer. So, closing the distance is advisable. The question is, how close? Okay, 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 okay. All right. One minute, 29 seconds. Wargaming is dead on target so far. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Maybe it's not going to start snowing today. Battleships can typically be divided into two groups. The first group is comfortable fighting at long and medium ranges. The focus of the second group is getting up close and personal. Let's review each group in detail. In this video, we'll take tier 10 ships as examples. However, the majority of our recommendations will be valid for ships of other tiers as well. The first group includes several branches at once. We'll start with Great Britain. Their ships have powerful high explosive shells, a long firing range, good concealment, and not so sturdy armor. These factors <laughs> make them great for fighting over medium and long ranges. Their concealment gives them the ability to hide from unwanted attention from the opposing team. The next group of long-range fighters can be found in the second branch of US battleships, headed by Vermont. These ships are slow and quite bulky, but they also have a hefty salvo weight, decent accuracy, and moderately good firing range values. By the way, the latest changes have added versatility to this branch. Gavriel 7 cheered. X1000. Be humbled? Never. This is Sparta. We will never bow to the greedy midgets of wargaming. 
<laughs> Greedy midgets. <laughs> well, besides Evan, they all were pretty short. That's true. Branch, so US ships can now close in on opponents more reliably. Legendary Yamato and her close relative Shikishima also belong to that group. Their moderate maneuvering capabilities are nicely offset with reliable protection against armor-piercing shells and powerful guns that can penetrate the majority of ships at various hit angles. The remaining branches, headed by Tier 10 Montana and Republic, offer solid, versatile warships that are great at fighting both over medium and long ranges. We can also add two more battleships to the group, French Bourgogne and American Ohio. And separate mentions go to Soviet battleship Slava and British Incomparable. The armor of these warships is more similar to that of heavy cruisers than that of battleships. Both of them have decent concealment. Slava's good accuracy and Incomparable's large caliber and perfect shell penetration capabilities make them highly effective, especially at long ranges. Let's proceed with close quarters battleships. Here we can immediately distinguish German battleships. The main features of the German branch headed by Schlieffen are good maneuvering abilities, powerful secondary batteries, and the availability of torpedoes and hydroacoustic search. Preussen and her precursors are slightly different. Decent armor plus powerful secondary and main battery guns are combined with large ship sizes and modest maneuverability. Soviet ships represent yet another branch of close quarters battleships. Their bow, stern, and deck have solid armor, and the main turrets traverse relatively quickly. In addition, Soviet battleships are equipped with guns that have high accuracy at close and medium ranges. The exhaust smoke generators of Italian battleships combined with their good armor, semi-armor piercing shells, and the fast traverse speed of their main turrets make these warships capable of approaching opponents for surprise attacks and retreating to a safe distance in case of danger. They really just do that. <clears throat> shells and the fast traverse speed of their main turrets oh, okay. make these warships capable of approaching opponents for surprise attacks and retreating to a safe distance in case of danger. However, none of this implies that long-range battleships can't approach their targets and close quarters <laughs> Eventually. can't fire from afar. <laughs> We're only talking Ooh, that's about... That's a really good shot. I like this. Look at this shot. This is such a cool video, part of the video. Quarters battleships can't fire from afar. We're only talking about achieving maximum efficiency. Moreover, it's highly unreasonable to overextend the range to your target and move to the map borders while playing long-range battleships. It's also a very bad idea to rush into a group of opponents during the initial minutes of a battle playing Kremlin or Schlieffen. Analyze the current combat situation and choose your targets wisely. About those My targets, God. the majority of battleships take about 30 seconds to reload their main battery guns. So battleships fire rarely, but... Chat. It's 35 degrees. I think it's going to snow today. I swear to God, I think... It's gonna snow today. Wargaming is spilling truth like never before. Should I be concerned? Or or happy? I'm 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 like I'm I'm a bit surprised. And and I don't know how to take this in. Is this like how how does one take this in, bro? They're, they're, they've been just spitting truth and indirectly indirectly criticizing imbeciles 
that are yoloing at the beginning and they even call them out schliefens because that's and, and kremlins that's what pretty much happens at the beginning or the guy sniping in the back it's like is this is is this is this actually happening am i still in bed hit hard and it would be a pity if the full power God, of damn. your salvo now i want to watch the water. video to the Choose end Use your targets thoughtfully and carefully and what's even better plan a few salvos in advance the ideal target is a ship with its side turned to you this way you'll be able to inflict the maximum possible damage that's why it's reasonable to wait for your opponent to expose their side and then open fire as soon as your guns are ready But if you see that none of your opponents are going to expose their sides soon, don't spare any shells. You can slightly improve the reload time of your guns by utilizing commander skills and upgrades. Don't forget that some skills are activated only in specific battle situations. That's why, before unlocking any battleship commander skills, you should make sure to read the description of each skill in the port. You can also fire high explosive shells at targets that are moving toward you bow first, or those that are retreating and exposing their aft. As we reading, what is this reading? that the man is speaking of reading you've already mentioned british battleships have an advantage their he shells deal high damage have good penetration capabilities and have high chances of setting target ships on fire at the same time, you won't find HE shells in the magazines of Italian battleships. Instead, they have semi-armor-piercing shells that can penetrate targets and deal damage at even the sharpest hit angles. Semi-armor-piercing and high-explosive shells are especially good when firing at battleship superstructures and poorly armored warships. When in battle, a battleship's captain should carefully observe the minimap and keep an eye on any opponents within reach of the battleship's guns. True mastery will come when you've learned to predict your opponent's maneuvers. Since battleship turrets don't traverse very quickly, it makes sense to aim them at a target in advance while the guns are still reloading. That way you'll be able to open fire as soon as they are loaded and ready. You can improve the turret traverse speed using a commander skill and an upgrade. There is another nuance when firing at an opponent's check if it's side, snowing outside. the thickness of their armor. If the armor is too thin for your shells to arm, you'll deal quite modest damage from over-penetrating. It's better to fire at such targets when they are coming at you bow first or at an angle. Another factor that affects the efficiency nope. of your salvo is the number Not of yet. guns that can fire at your opponent. Prior to firing a salvo, it's advisable to take up a position that will allow all of your turrets to fire at your opponent. However, you should always remember that doing so often means exposing your side, and your opponent can take advantage of this. It's important for any battleship to survive as long as possible, while taking a multitude of hits. Oh my god! Survivability under fire is often underrated. I'm getting... But it's one of the most important functions of a battleship in battle. I'm having... I don't know it if might you can see it. I'm it's having no goosebumps. to take hits from opponents, but for your team, it's a I'm matter of I'm actually having goosebumps everywhere right now. Just keep in mind that all the shells that what failed the to penetrate fuck is your going armor on? or bounced off could have dealt damage to your likely armored allies and sent them to the bottom quite fast. A lone battleship no matter how powerful she is, is easy prey. There is an entire set of effective means for battleships to survive for a long time in battle. First of all, their armor. Armor should be utilized correctly. It's much easier to pierce it at a 90 degree angle than at an acute one. The sharper the angle is, the thicker the rubber content and a while more of WG ball. Thank you for two years, Pyro. Appreciate it. Welcome to Hans, dude.
relative armor and the higher the ricochet chances are. Secondly, battleships come equipped with damage control party, and it's vital to use this at the optimal time. If you have plenty of HP left, don't spend the charge on a single fire or flooding instance, especially if you can restore the damage by utilizing repair party. Our game has commander skills and upgrades that can significantly improve the characteristics of ship consumables. By the way, you'll be able to effectively offset fire and flooding instances by using, yeah, that's right, skills and upgrades. Speaking of the repair party consumable, it should be utilized wisely and shouldn't be activated at your earliest convenience. Remember that if your bow, for example, has been completely destroyed, it will receive just one sixth of the shell's damage upon every ads. hit. Let's make it one month without ads. Ah, <sighs> oh, thank you so much for two months, man. Appreciate it. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, if you subscribe, you don't get ads. That's true. However, after utilizing a repair party charge, the bow will have HP again, so penetrations will deal more damage to it, a third of a shell's damage. You can learn more about HP distribution and the repair party mechanic in the corresponding video from the How It Works series. Finally, the most important survivability aspect is your position. Helming battleships is similar to playing chess. You need to observe the entire board and think Gabriel several turns seven ahead. Cheered. Why is X the open... 500. Brain cannot compute. Overheating. Must do emergency shutdown. Beep beep boop pre rarea. I am... I'm, I'm... I'm... I'm in shock. I'm speechless. It's been 12 minutes? And they haven't fucked anything up. In fact, they're giving really good advice. For the entire duration of the video. Like... What happened? Did someone get fired and they, they employed someone that actually knows what they're doing? ...water so important to battleships, and especially to long-range battleships. It provides enough room for maneuvering and diminishes the chances of surprise attacks by destroyers. However, you shouldn't think that islands need to be avoided at all costs. It's sometimes reasonable to stay close to land, protect your side, and restore HP in a safe spot. When near an island, you can also easily retreat from danger. On the majority of maps, the flanks provide more advantages than the center. Opponents can fire at you from three directions in the center, but from only two directions on the flanks. It's easier to protect the vulnerable sides of your ship on the flanks. I hope they don't use all of their... That it does I really hope they don't use all of their IQ in one video, though, so that, that now for the next five, six years, we're going to be continuing to get nothing but stupid shit, because this is shocking. It doesn't matter to aircraft squadrons <clears throat> from what direction your ship is approaching. What actually matters is whether allies that can cover you with AA fire are close. Naturally, the AA defenses of any battleship could be improved. That's when commander skills and upgrades will come in handy. Well, we're, we're talking AA and, and planes. This can't possibly end up well. They're going to have to tell you that it matters, but we all know it hardly matters. Don't forget that if you make your choice in favor of AA defenses, your battleship won't be able to utilize more important skills for the type that could improve the ship's survivability and combat performance. Another aspect is crucial for your survival. You need to watch out for opponents helming destroyers. Being on the receiving end of a sudden and difficult to evade torpedo spread is an unpleasant surprise. By the way, it's better for a torpedo to hit the center of your ship than your bound stern. The sides of a battleship have torpedo protection, and this reduces torpedo damage and the chances of flooding. If you consider torpedoes as the main danger for your battleship, the following skill and upgrade will come in handy for you.
We've covered the survivability issues, but taking fire from opponents, surviving, and dealing damage are tactical tasks. Battleships have strategical tasks as well. One such task is to hold a direction or flank. A battleship on a flank can certainly be effective at holding back advancing opposing forces, and they are even capable of entirely stopping them in their tracks. Moreover, if the current situation allows, you need to attack and break through the opposition's defenses. Naturally, it's hard to accomplish all these tasks without support from your team. That's why it's important to actively interact with your allies and coordinate your actions. Don't consider our advice to be the ultimate truth. Act according to the current situation, but always act wisely. Remember that battleships are the backbone of a team. Some really amazing shots, I gotta say. Makes me want to do another Admiral's orders. I can't remember the last time that I was speechless and being just like what what am i hearing right now in a good way like i've had plenty of these kind of impressions watching their videos but not for anything good almost ever Wow, this was a really good video, dude. This was a really good video. They covered in what? 15 and a half minutes. So much stuff. It's insane. So much stuff. It's not that it was 15 minutes of trying to tell you how to do something, whatever. This was like a lot of really good advice. Like any new player should watch this video and try to soak it in as much as they can i am shocked x500 flambino you can stop dreaming now and wake up time to play tarkov dude wow i am impressed i am actually impressed i i am i'm actually impressed that that's all i gotta say that's a really good video 97% of what they said was spot on. Now, I I, I have to say, at points, my, Higher flam. my, my attention would drift away because I would just start thinking of something different or weird or uh, and I was having food or I was still thinking about that I'm, how much I'm in shock or who got fired in Wargaming and who got... Who, who's the new guy? Who's the hero that we all need and deserve? Th that that wrote these fucking video lines and and this the scenario of this whole thing i am in shock and whoever did the 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 video part some absolutely absolutely amazing shots as well it totally reminds me of when we were wor working on our video and and i'm already like Ooh, i want to do another one when i see shit like this <laughs> <sighs> Well, we'll see if anything like this happens again, but I'm I'm actually impressed. I I am really impressed. I I, I don't know like my mods are my 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 my, my witnesses. Whenever we do a dev blog or or watch War Gaming's video, we can do nothing but lose our shit. Or me at least get agitated annoyed pissed off sad 
depressed, worried, and all this. And... And this was act... This is... This is everything opposite. Video will be taken down and the guy that made that video gets fired. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. That, that's like a spark in the dark. That was actually a spark in the dark, man. I am mind blown. I'm actually fucking mind blown.